All right, in this video, we'll take another look at the asset warp tool. So I have another artboard here with a different illustration on it. And this is all stage level objects. There's several layers here. If I lock all these layers, um, there's a mask at the top. So that should mask everything out. And you'll see this guy uh, with a hammer and he's going to hammer in this nail. Now the armature is what we want to use the asset warp tool on. So I'm going to select all of these objects, the hammer, the arm, all the way up through the shoulder, make an, um, a bone structure here with that tool and see if we can create an animation where it looks like he's hammering the snail. Um, before I start I should pull out the frames as far as I want to go. So let's go out to, let's say, frame 40. And I will select all these frames and hit F5. F5 will just extend the timeline um, for that. And then um, it's important now that I lock what I don't need. So everything is locked. And I need to unlock um, so I can see what I'm doing. And the mask is hiding everything, so I'm just going to hide the mask for now. We can turn that back on after. So that means I get to lock the body, hair, head, nose, all this stuff, so that that stuff won't move. So the only thing I should be able to select now is the hammer and the arm. So very important, um, if you're going to make anything with the Asset Warp tool that is a shape object like this. These, these are just shapes that are inside of Adobe Animate. You want to make sure that you select all the shapes before you start with the making the mesh. So it's really important. If you don't, you're going to get an error. So what I want to do is I just want to, I'm going to pull this down a little bit so I can see what I'm working on. And I'm just going to make a marquee selection to select all that. So you can see that the, all the outlines, all the shapes, everything is selected. So that's the first step. Now I can grab my asset warp tool and I'm gonna click inside here in the shoulder to where I think the joint should be and that will start the mesh. So you can see the mesh has been created. I can go down here and create the bone that goes to the elbow and then I can create the bone that goes to the wrist, and I'm going to create one for the hand. And that's all I need. I just need those those points right there. Um, so this part, the hammer itself, is not going to be part of the armature. And the reason why is because I want to be able to rotate the hand and have the hammer move with it. And you can see how that's working. All right. So let's see if we can make this into an animation. So I did that wrong, I did that here. And notice what happened. So once I created the mesh with the Asset Warp tool, what it did was it combined the, the content of these two layers. So right now the hammer layer, there's actually nothing there. It combined those two layers um, to this single layer. So I want to move ahead, uh, maybe up to frame six. I'm going to create a keyframe with F6. And what I want to do is I'm going to move this a little forward. So that moves that up, which is what I want. I'm just going to hide this layer. All right. Move this back. So that moves the hammer back. All right. Okay. And then we'll move forward again, maybe a couple frames. So now we want to make contact. And again, move this arm up. Then move this forward. Move this down. And right there, we're making contact. Now this bone right here is not a flex bone, it's a hard bone, so I'm not sure why we're getting so much def deformation here. Oh, it's a soft, soft bone. If I change it to a hard bone, 
You'll see what that does. See the, the switch that it just made. So maybe I'll pull this down. All right, so we get contact there. So we get, right, it's up, and then it's gonna go back to that position and back. So rather than making additional keyframes and positioning all of those points, another thing you can do is just copy the frame, go forward, and do a paste frame. So you have that position, right? And then you can do that again, copy this one, move forward, do a paste frames. If you want the action to get faster, you would do, let's see, where are we now? So what we wanna do, let's make sure that this is contacting. Right there. And then go back. So that's a way, then this should be contacting. You pull that down a bit. Right. So if we want this to get faster, what we will do is make the keyframes closer together. So I'm gonna copy this. And instead of going five or six frames out, I'll go maybe two frames out, copy this frame, paste it closer. And you can move it closer too. You can just click and drag once it's selected. So you can see kind of like the action that's gonna happen. There's no keyframing in right now. But if we wanted to, we can add the keyframes. And then eventually at the end here, we wanna make it so that his arm drops down, shoulder goes back. Right, he's looking at his work. And then we would have to animate that nail going in. Okay, so now we have all those frames. I'm gonna go ahead and select them all and just right click and choose create classic tween. You can see what that looks like. And goes by really quick but you get the idea. So it's a much better use of this tool um, for small things like this. Maybe you have a crane that's moving or maybe you have like a robot that's moving um, and just the arms or legs are moving. The key things to remember with this asset warp tool though is that um, you can only use it on stage level objects like this. Uh, it will convert it into that mesh. So that's uh, really important. You can't use it on symbols or movie clips. You can use it on bitmaps. Um, so a bitmap is anything that you import from Photoshop or Illustrator. You can use it for that. Um, but then, you know, it's warping, it's deforming the object. So just keep that in mind when you're using this tool and have fun with it. And um, that's it.